Hey, so, you like my new shirt? Pretty sweet, right? Two commandments. Love your God, love your neighbors. So, I wanted to jump on and chat about something real quick that I'm learning in my Bible study and it is hitting me pretty crazy. Um, so this week we're gonna be learning about forgiveness. And for a lot of us, especially me, I have a tendency to not forgive, um, to hold grudges, to not let go of things. And I realized that it's actually only affecting me, that it actually doesn't even affect the other person. Um, number one, that person couldn't even care, maybe. Um, number two, they might not even know about it. Um, for them to ask for forgiveness, but forgiveness actually comes from you to relieve your pain in your heart. So let me explain what um, I learned in the aspect of forgiveness within ourselves. So Ephesians 1, 7, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. So if your God can do that for you, why can't we do that for others and ourselves? Because we live in a fallen world. We face the realities of hurt and offense. So the words and deeds of others can wound us to the core in indescribable ways. Things like neglect, abuse, violence, betrayal, and even cruel remarks can cause bitterness and resentment. To infiltrate, to infiltrate our hearts and we perhaps even unintentionally begin to harbor unforgiveness. So the offense slashes through our defenses and hurts us in the moment. But the aftermath of unforgiveness is like a poison that remains long after the event takes place. It seeps into our lives, tainting our thoughts and clouding our vision. If left unchecked and unbothered, it will eventually penetrate our hearts and paralyze our ability to live, to love, and to be loved. And most of my life, I have actually um, I guess it affects the fact of me feeling like I could be loved. And that's why me finding Jesus was a miracle because I have someone that loves me for who I am, no matter what. He died for my, for, for, for me, and he died for you. And it's just the most beautiful gift ever given. So harboring unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting another person to die. It does much greater harm to us than the person we refuse to forgive. In another sense that I heard um, that wasn't in my Bible study, another thing that I heard, get this one. So it's kind of like if you're so mad at someone that um, there's a story where it was like a joke and uh, I heard it from a guy today and uh, uh, he walks in, he walks in to his job and his shirt's all poofy like this. 
okay? And uh, the, the guy, he, he, this one, the other guy goes up to him, he's like, why, what's under your shirt? And he said, it's dynamite. And he said, why do you have dynamite under your shirt? And he said, well, because so-and-so, every time he comes in, he slaps me on the chest and it hurts. And it makes me feel upset and angry. So I'm gonna blow his hand off. But it's gonna hurt you too. <laughs> you see, it's kind of like catching yourself on fire and hoping the other person gets hurt by smoke inhalation. You have to understand that forgiveness only affects you and your heart. So learn to forgive and let go does not mean that you have to keep that person in your life because their actions do not meet your criteria of the way you want to live. And if you want to live right, righteous, honorable, with good morals and respect, and this person doesn't meet those morals in your life, they don't have to be in your life. But you do have to forgive them because it only hurts you. So, God bless. I hope that helps you. Have a wonderful day.